we are back here with Charles Jennings and now we are going to talk about the challenges to implement the 70-20-10 model. I'm Wagner Casimiro and this is Espresso 3. Charles, what are the main challenges to implement the 70-20-10 model? There are really two areas of main challenge. The first area is around what I would call mindset because 70-20-10 is a model and a methodology of change. It's a model which helps us extend our thinking around learning into thinking around performance and therefore not just thinking about the programs that we can develop and the courses we can develop but thinking about all the ways in which we can help people do their jobs as best they can. And in terms of mindset it, it requires us to, to think of learning and performance, not as schooling, not as the fact that we have to go away from work and learn and come back to work, but how we can integrate that into work, how we can integrate learning into work and actually learn from work. And the mindset change is not just for the individual, but it's also the individual's manager. They must understand that they have a responsibility and in terms of ensuring that there are opportunities to learn as part of work. There are opportunities to reflect. We take time to reflect on what went well, what didn't go well, what we could do better, those sorts of things. There's a mindset change also for HR and learning professionals to, to move from being managers of learning to being what I would call Sherpas, they're guides. They're helping individuals take responsibility for their own learning and then get the best they can out of that. Charles, how could we overcome these challenges? So one way to address these challenges is, as we described in our book, uh, to adopt five roles and a series of tasks and processes within each of those roles. And these five roles are, first of all, the performance detective. The performance detective identifies the root cause of the problems, the, the business challenges that are being met. Then, with that output, that, with that performance consulting role, that performance detective role, that data then goes to a performance architect who then architects a solution, a 70-20-10 solution to the problem that's being addressed. And that solution should start by looking at the 70 and the 20 elements. How can we make sure that we provide solutions which are as close to the point of need as possible? and utilize social learning, workplace learning, learning through experience and so on. Then in building the solutions, there's a role called a performance master builder. And that's not the same as an instructional designer. It may involve some instructional design work, but it's looking at how you architect 70, 20, 10 solutions, not just 10 solutions. There are another two roles. One, one we call the performance game changer, which where I've seen it operating best that isn't carried out by someone in HR and learning and development, but is often done in conjunction with people in internal communications and marketing departments, because that's about how do we embed these changes across the organization? How do we get them embedded into the culture? And the last role we call the performance tracker. And the performance tracker, the role there is determining the metrics to be used, the stakeholder metrics, what success looks like, and tracking all the time as you go through the process to make sure that the business value is created and the, the, uh, the solutions are successful. Okay, thank you. to talk about uh, the, uh, the book. <laughs> I forget the book. <laughs> and one of this one after one of the authors of this book, the problems book. 